What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a patch notes review with your boy and if you're interested to know my points and my opinion on this patch, stick around, I know you won't be disappointed. Let's get into Hilda. Hilda is a flow unit, yet another flow unit that is going to be in contention for the broken flow units that are running around at the moment, aka Tia Ethan. Maybe guys, guys have seen a resurgence. So we do have Sleep Tide ability 1 deals damage based on attack and defense. So another flow unit that scales out of defense. Uh, note that we still don't have a single wind unit that scales out of defense. Correct me if I'm wrong. We have two flow units, two inferno units, and no unit that scales out of defense for wind. So food for thought, food for thought. The durations of all debuffs on the enemy plus one inflict sleep for one turn. Do you, there's a unit that does something extremely similar, but instead of inflicting sleep, inflicts stun. Do you know who it is? It is Gaius. Yes, Gaius does exactly the same thing, also increases duration of debuffs for one turn and inflicts a stun for one turn. But with his passive, he also inflicts Seer. <laughs> uh, they are making original. Uh, but, but this is not an original, okay? Hilda is not an original design. And uh, the rent, the rent. Delirium deals damage to all enemies based on attack and defense. Okay, inflicts speed down and poison effect for two turns. So this is very similar to uh, Efe's uh, third skill, but they changed Efe's third skill because Efe used to give speed down as well, but then they swapped it to attack break or something along that line. Wait a minute, guys, I have to close the door now. There are some kids playing on the background and it gives some good natural lighting as you can see. And then uh, a further sleeps for one turn and extends poison for one turn. Okay, it's going to be another TA because remember, TA, <laughs> TA stuns now for 100% chance and inflicts speed down for one, uh, two turns. So if this skill over here is also a three turn cooldown, another skill that is super cracked being on an S2, that, like Lilith doesn't understand how this game works, how the health of the game works. This skill over here has the power to be very, very strong on the right scenarios because it's 100% sleep, 100% speed down, inflicts poison for one turn. This is a massively stacked S2, but it gets, it gets better. Dream Interrupted gains deep sleep for two turns, deal damage to all enemies based on Hilda's attack and defense, inflicts two turn defense down, so <coughs> she can be used in cleave as well since she does inflict the defense down, AoE. I do believe that they're trying to make these units to somewhat fight the tank meta, the tank meta, and also having a possibility to sort of counter the cleave meta because you're inflicting defense down with a little bit of more damage and even if you're not using heavy hitters like let's say unas or any other aoe unit with the defense break and some attack buff along the line we'll be able to deal with the damage for you to kill the cleave meta but uh, there's another ethan at the <laughs> <laughs> There's a flow unit called Ethan that also inflicts defense breaks. So this is the culmination of all of the overpowered flow units into one. As you can see, all of the current overpowered flow units. But it gets better. If an enemy defense is below Hilda's, she also inflicts plus two stacks of poison on the enemy for two turns. That is a lot of poison, by the way. And even better, Hilda's base defense skills with her accuracy. Okay, so... Defense scales with her accuracy, so you should be aiming to get 100% accuracy so she gets a little bit more defense on the spot. Plus, Hilda won't miss when inflicting debuffs on targets whose accuracy is not above hers. I don't like this. I don't like this at all because not only you're giving her a defense boost with her accuracy, you're also making all of her skills... <laughs> All of her skills are irresistible. So this skill over here will always... Oh, sheesh, I'm sorry. This skill over here will always increase by one. Always increase by one. Will always inflict sleep by one turn. This is because th th this stupid uh, Opera GX, the other ones don't do this. And will always sleep for one turn while she has the deep sleep while she has the deep sleep but it gets better it gets better and then deep sleep inflicts sleep for one turn and poison for two turns at the start of an enemy's turn there's a unit in summoner's war called cecilia it's a little bit the opposite that's why because i'm saying this is not an original design she's a, a legend a light and dark five star which if the enemy uh, if you get a turn you sleep a unit for one turn randomly so here it's the opposite when the enemy gets a turn 
brain, it's a little bit more broken. When the enemy gets... Because Lilith has to make everything a little bit more broken than it already is. Because Tevor is also a unit very similar to a unit in Summoner's War. Rent. <laughs> and uh, this can be very good because if she has this thing up, let's say, and, and you will see that her R6 allows her to do this. They really like having that at the start of combat. Uh, we're gonna talk about it. A little bit more damage, new effect, dream interrupted. Upon successful increasing poison on enemy, inflicts another poison. Very weak R2, to be completely honest. Comparing it to the R6, very, very weak. And then she has a 20% of ignoring resist. It's so stupid. I, I don't understand why this R4... With, because you will have all the time 100% accuracy on her, which is super dumb. You will be using most of the time uh, accuracy headphones and 100%. So if you do have 100%, nobody uses other 100% accuracy units. So you will always land your stuff. It's, it's, it's just stupid. It's just stupid. But a new effect is added. Gain deep sleep for one turn at the start of combat. Okay, here it would have been already overpowered. Or not overpowered, but it would have been very, very good. We have to test it out to see if she's truly going to be overpowered. But then, while Hilda is under the effects of deep sleep, the enemy's sleep won't be removed by damage. Why? Why? It's the exact same thing that they did with the R6 from Sally. So, she, be ab she being able to start with her thing, it was already super good. It would do what she is supposed to do, which is counter cleave and counter uh, control. But no, they, they had to, they always have to implement a little bit more to make Whale say, Oh my god, this R6 is so good, I need to have it. Like, everyone already saw this, it's starting to get a little bit boring, Lilith. Why? Why? You, you can make money with a lot of other things. You can make money with a lot of things. But if you start with this one, and, and let's say a lot of whales are going to have this, your Unas or your TN now, they should be having light above because what's going to happen is they are going to 100% get stunned because usually you won't have 100% accuracy on Tia. You should, but even then, it's not a guarantee that you won't be screwed over because it will still be accuracy resistance check. If you don't, you will guarantee to be slapped. You're going to miss your turn. Unas, 100%, you will miss your turn. Your cleave is dead and you're going to lose. So think about that. Now, when you uh, face some uh, of this girl, especially at R6, you'll have to take that into consideration. Now, let's start with Adriana Canchantico. I'm not going to take a little bit more longer, but uh, I had to talk a little bit about these things because it's important for you to understand why I do have some insights that differently from the game. Father Esper who excels at launching assist and pursuit attacks. I'm more interested on this character over here because she is free and she is fun. She has a lot of fun mechanics to it, which is like the pursuits and the assists and she actually reduces her AP. It's, it's not some culmination of a lot of Aspers. She, she is very similar to Raven, but Raven was already a unique design. So picking it up from Raven, I do believe it's fun because you can pair it up with Raven and do some crazy stuff. So deals damage based on attack and HP, so she's a HP scaling, which means you can actually use her and the tank meta as well, and she will still be dealing good. The damage gains one stack of red chili, Adriana's AP, the second skill, most likely it's a passive like, um, like Ravens. If not, if it is a skill that is activatable, it doesn't seem like it, but decrease significantly at the start of an ally's turn. Sure, she performs assist attacks with her basic ability when her allies cast basic abilities. This is the beef that I have with it. It's not going to be as uh, versatile as I would have wanted. It does fit a little bit on the tank meta because the tank meta wants to use a lot of first skills, but if you're trying to go for a cleave setup, which her kit can be used in a cleave setup because of her third skill, you will see that it's not going to be that easy to proc this, unless I don't know how many stacks of red, red chili you need for it to be activated. I don't know, we have to see. But when red chili stacks reach a certain number, she will pursue AoE attack into a stun, which is super good. We need to see how much damage that is going to do. But on top of that, she's going to get an extra turn and remove all of her debuffs, which is very good because imagine she's going to go for an AoE attack. She misses. Let's say that she gets stunned from an uh, AoE Avatara, not an AoE, but from a JUI or a miss rate up from average. She's just going to get an extra turn, cleanse it, and get her stern to go for. For her third skill. Red Chili though increases her attack and her crit damage so we do need to see what is the scaling between attack and HP because usually when units scale on HP they usually don't scale a lot with attack so Red Chili giving her attack might not be the crucial thing but the crit damage might be 
very, very good. She's also going to be very well paired with Ethan and with Everett because she will allow um, Everett to uh, stack her up faster with his first skill while his third skill is on cooldown, giving her a little bit more damage reduction and they pair up really well together. While Ethan also increases crit rate and crit damage via her basic skill, or his thingy, which is very good. Third skill deals damage on all enemies based on the attack and HP. The fewer the targets, the higher the damage. Uh, Yuhime also has this, but inflicts defense down for one turn and grants all allies 10% AP. This is massive because we'll see uh, later down the line, Light was also buffed to give 10% when uh, the effect expires. Now we, we're going to talk about that later, but let's say that she starts with this, she uses it, she's going to increase, and if she does have the Light above, she's going to increase by 20%, so she's effectively a booster that inflicts defense down, which is good, is very, very good. And depending on uh, how things work out, she might still be able to use her second skill. Now, her R6 is the thing that is uh, very interesting. Her R2 as well. When attacking while not in your own turn, damage plus 12%. This might be very good if she is on Avatara. Remember that Avatara might be able to stack her red chili faster so because she will pursuit whenever ev anyone else does avatar as well she's going to be super fun i'm going to build her and try to see how that is because she most likely is an r6 i do think she is free r6 reduces targets max hp capacity when pursuit attack deals damage so pretty much like raven's s2 it's not an original design but raven is one of my favorite units to use at the moment and she is super fun now we do have Andra's the ritual miracle boss i really don't want to talk about it because it's another revamp uh, it has a lot of stuff we will have to see it in practice i might make a video on both of the shade mother and her but i don't like pve if you guys like it you will have daddies and all of the other youtubers to do it we do have new equipment sets we have been talking on the church discord server of the applications that these sets might have in the game like but with the buff to thunder that we're also going to talk about it we have to say that a calamity set is not going to be a thing maybe in some pv scenarios because for each additional debuff damage plus three percent with a maximum 15 so for you to get 35 percent damage you will need five debuffs if i'm not mistaken and with one it's 20 percent now thunder now gives 80 percent crit damage on bosses <laughs> 80 percent crit damage so i doubt that this 35 percent will be more than 80 I don't understand Lilith shot them in the foot pretty much because they wanted to make Fafnir a little bit more farmable, but then the new dungeon is not going to be farmable at all for it, the exception of some units. We see here Harmony set, ally damage plus 10% after casting ability 3. I don't know, maybe this can be good if, let's say, let's say if you use your ability 3, I don't know, also, we have to see if this is, oh, it's stackable. Okay, okay, this might be good on Guinea, because Guinea can cycle her third skill very fast, and she will stack that into uh, massive levels. It doesn't say uh, that there is a cap, it doesn't say that there is a cap, but let's say that you stack this for three or four, this is going to be very, very strong, because if you, when you get a new stack, it, re it re uh, applies her third... Uh, the sets, they look bad, but I'm pretty sure along the line we're going to find some crazy combos to use with them, like Guinea, for example, or even Everett. Everett can use this because he's going to go for the third skill, he's going to get that, and then he's going to, let's say, if that, when you use your third skill, that pops like every other skill, and then you will have two extra turns to take advantage of that 10% increased damage, that is good, because the only way to increase a max HP damage user's uh, damage is through uh, Thor which or Thunder, which is 50% crit damage right now, but then you would need to have 100% crit rate, uh, a lot of things to, to be set. But then you do have the Brawler set, basic ability damage 15%, consecutively further increases its damage by 10. This is going to be massively good with Brewster. Maybe this new epic chick might be very good with it. And units that usually already counterattack naturally, but we don't have a lot of units that counterattack naturally outside of Avatara. And these here might be good with Sally's, might be good with Liam's because they will increase a little bit more damage um, reduction on the team base defense based on where it's resist and this one might be good on units like uh, Everett that really don't need Avatara they really don't need uh, light as well because of the units that he's usually pair
paired with. Days of Let Shade the Mothers, I really don't care about it. This one, Manage Formation, I was watching a GGS video and he said that this one, it cannot be saved, but from more here, following the update, players can access the formation management pair in the War Room. War Room, okay, this is War Room to edit both their instance formation and custom formation. Once saved, these formations can be conveniently applied directly. Please note, equipment info cannot be saved. So you can save the formation, but you can't save the equipment. So let's say that you have two different teams, but you want to use the same set on Unas and the same set on Clara, you will pick the one that has Clara, but the units or the gear from Unas is not going to shift to Clara. I understand why that isn't the case, because if it keeps shifting, eventually you'll lose track of what are you using. Let's say that you have Unas on defense with your fastest set, and then you try and use Clara with that formation set, then it's going to swap out that those runes to Clara, and then your defense will stuck be stuck without gear, and you probably might not even see that, only after you, okay, I had this loss and I usually don't lose with this team, what happened? And then you see that your Unas was mega slow because it didn't have gear. So they, they should make it so that they keep the same stats, so pretty much you're going to, in offense, because in defense that would be super overpowered, me having two one fast set and giving it to everyone that it would be broken but for offense is not that much because it's just convenience because if i really want to use my unas and my clara or, or okay maybe i can't use them both in hollow or let's say but in point war or in knockout yeah maybe in knockout because it has two teams but even then it's not going to be that big of a deal i mean maybe maybe, it is. maybe i'm talking shit right now custom information players can customize their formations giving them a name additionally players can save blah 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 blah, blah. copy formation added an expert name card when she's maxed yes because a lot of you are going to have her max no doubt warm inter winter J just one thing that the last one was endless summer and a lilith is uh, close to 40 degrees here where I live and uh, a lot around the world we having a ton of fires and you're, you're making warm winter is this some sort of joke <laughs> okay it's it's the same thing the same event as we get it warm-up event uh, one thing that I really want to talk about it everything is the same from the previous uh, seasons but I said that would be seven days here it starts it's not going to even start on the, the patch it starts two weeks after the patch, which is so, so bad, because I, I, I really wanted to go in, man. I want to go in. <laughs> to, uh, this season is not going to be a very good season for me, but I, I still want to go in. And it goes from 26 to the, the 9 of September. Now, this might seem like 14 days, but remember that they usually leave it open for a couple more days for people to use their their rewards. So it might not be 14 days, it might be only 10 or 9, because remember, the leaks that we had, it were 9 days of RDA. So even if it happened to be 2 weeks, 2 weeks it would have been a little bit better, but still, waiting 6 months to have 2 weeks of RDA <laughs> doesn't, doesn't feel still, this still doesn't feel good. The only thing it's, I think, I think it's it, this wasn't the case before uh tier 10 but everything else still is the same and except for group one it's going to be the honor and infinite miracle the users that or the servers that started first and group two is going to be the japanese and the korean server i would have liked to play against the korean and the japanese uh players because they are there are a lot of strong uh, players there as well players that are faster than me at the moment a lot of good a lot of whales because usually koreans and japanese they like to whale a lot so uh, i don't understand this one but it is what it is. May on the next one, if there is a next one, we will have him uh, together. Golden City Challenge, limited echo event. We will have Yun Chuan, so if you want to get your R2 Yun Chuan, it would be highly recommended, especially since Fafnir now is a little bit better to farm. They made it out because of the buffs that he gave. And if a, <clears throat> I do believe that Ife is here because Hilda and her are going to be very good for Shade or not for Shade, but for the new boss, they might be very good. And Raven is coming back to the Echo Shimmer. So if you guys were keeping your Shimmers for Nuxi, well, get slapped. You're not gonna get Nuxi anytime soon. Now, the everything else is a little bit, uh, yeah, anything else, it's, it's nobody cares. But here it's very important. Thor got a little bit of a boost and I don't understand, I mean, I understand why, but this wasn't a set that needed a boost to begin with because Thunder was already better than War and now it's 
definitely 100% mega mega better than uh, than war. Even if you do have a little bit better stats on war, this still is going to be much better because uh, uh, crit damage scales a lot better than attack. And crit damage also scales with defense and a HP scaling units. War only scales with the attacking units. So here is another reason for you to farm uh, Fafnir. And now Light is even better than it was before. To me, Light was one of the best sets, if not the best set in the game. Because it gives you so much versatility, especially versus the first turn. But now gains immunity for one turn at the start of combat. And when it expires... All allies AP plus 10%. So effectively, everyone can be an AP booster right now. Just if you do have the light above, you move and everyone is going to move 10%. Now, I don't know if this expires means if you get stripped, you will also get that 10% because it doesn't feel like expiring. Whenever they say something happens, even outside of your control, it says when uh, allies or enemies, when a debuff ends before the time, they, they have this weird wording, like with um, Tevor, not Tevor, Tricky. Tricky has something along that line that is like, when uh, units end that out of, out of their time, and there's another unit that's it's exactly the same, but we don't know. We don't know how that, that works. So this <laughs> 21 minutes, I, I'm pretty sure nobody's going to watch this. But if you watched it until the end, leave it in the comments. Uh, thank you, Aeon. You're very cool. And no, no, no. <laughs> just say I stayed here until the end watching you rant about how the game is going. I do believe that these changes over here at the end, they are very good because there's endless possibilities with these new buffs. Hilda, she might be very good depending on the situations. Yet again, another R6 unit, unfortunately the new epic he is she's pretty cool i i'm i really want to mess around with her and uh, maybe the new sets will have some implications depending on uh, the units that we're going to use on them guys thank you much very much for watching and i'll see you later